Hello everybody, and just here, and welcome back to Symphogear. I'm recording it for the second time. Now, don't worry, I haven't seen the actual episode, because I started recording it, and then suddenly, and then when I got to the uh, actual reaction section, I, I had a weird feeling that I've seen that already, and sure enough, I did. I started episode 2 again, and I had to stop the recording and uh, start again. This time, I'm gonna double check that. Episode 3. This time is the correct episode. Okay, let's go again through the intro, more or less, that I had in that cutout section. Um, many people already uh, warned me about Simple Gear, that it's an extremely bingeable series, and um, someone in my Discord server even said that it's an anime that broke Tiabu and caused him to record six episodes in a single day, because apparently it's just this bingeable. And seeing how I'm slowly heading over to sleep into the arms of Orpheus, I hope Episode 3 doesn't end with a huge cliffhanger, because I will either spend another hour watching it, or I won't be able to fall asleep, and I don't know which will be worse in the long term. Mm, right, uh, I also got some uh, clarifications from some people, I hope none of them are spoilers. They didn't seem like spoilers, at least not major ones, But so, so I hope it's fine. Um, but apparently it's just Japan that has the Symphogear technology and that's why they're so secretive about it. Because if other countries knew that Japan has access to it, they would want that technology as well. Perhaps not just to use it to protect themselves against the noise, but also to wage war with each other, right? Symphogears are essentially WMDs. So it's no wonder that it's a little bit of a secret. Not even a little bit, it's very much a secret. Uh, noise is a uh, worldwide phenomenon, apparently, which makes me wonder how are other countries coping with the attacks? If it seems that it's just Symphogears that are able to fight against them, maybe other countries are just, you know, losing population in the millions, while Japan just casually sends teenage girls to sing and defeat the monsters? I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps those, uh, those questions uh, will be answered. I heard that uh, Simple Gear is a series that has a lot of, you know, minutiae, a lot of details, a lot of very subtle foreshadowing that eventually um, comes to full realization and that people are tracking all those things with, like, Excel spreadsheets and Google Docs and whatnot, and it's all crazy. And that, and the bingeability of this series, makes me think, what the fuck have I gotten myself into? <laughs> I hope I'm not gonna end up, like, in that meme, you know, on my corkboard, connecting the pictures of the characters in the show with red string. I hope it doesn't come to that, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. You can never, never know. Mm, right. What happened in the previous episode? Oh, I got a... And it's no more. Um, what happened in the previous episode? In the previous episode, first of all, it ended up on a fight between our main character and the blue-haired girl. So that's gonna be interesting to see, because... I wanted to say that it came kind of out of nowhere, but it didn't. The blue-haired girl certainly holds some resentment, holds some grudge, right? The kind of feeling of how dare you stand where she stood. So it it's not completely out of nowhere, but at the same time they have, like, bigger things to worry about. And if they kill each other in a pointless battle, that's gonna be not great for either of them, not great for their organization, not great for the country. 
So hopefully it's just a quote-unquote friendly spar or someone's gonna separate them sooner or later. I don't know. We'll see how it goes in this very episode. Uh, we also learned a little bit about uh, what the Sinful Gears are. Uh, initially I thought that I thought that they are the weapons they wield, but uh, no, Sinful Gear is the entire armor of theirs, this ancient technology that makes them sprout cables out of their backs and transform into a Gundam, <laughs> essentially. Sure, at least we have a name for it and we have a you know, certain particular thing that bears that name. That's always good. Mm, what else did we learn? Uh, yeah, we learned that it's you know ancient technology found in some archaeological dig site and we can't really recreate that. And we know that simple gears are the only thing that can withstand the attacks of the noise. So there is that. Also, the lyrics to the songs that they sang during the battles, uh, I heard on my Discord, uh, which you can join by the way, link down in the description, uh, I heard that those lyrics are significant and that I should pay attention to them, which isn't particularly easy, seeing how there is, you know, great action right in the middle and I want to focus on that action and somewhere in the corner of the screen there is some lyrics with a fancy font and fancy colors and it's not easy to focus on both things at once. I will try to pay more attention to the lyrics because I admit that I was mostly ignoring them in previous episodes. Now I know not to do that. Uh, but I have a question for you. Is there some place, some, I don't know, Google Dog or some website or something that lists those lyrics and the episode and the um, timestamp when they appeared? Because if something like that exists, then I could simply read the lyrics after I'm done watching the show, after I'm done watching the episode, to, you know, learn the significance of it for the next episode. Maybe, I don't know, I'm just throwing out ideas because I don't want to miss out on significant and meaningful content, uh, which I wouldn't be missing out on if I were, you know, a native Japanese speaker and was able to understand what she sings and focus on the action at the same time. Uh, that's one of the downside of subs, but I don't think there is a Simple Gear dub, and even if there was, I don't think I'd want to watch it. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of dubs, if you didn't know that. Okay, I think that's it. I think all that needed coverage has been covered. It's just Earl Grey with a slice of lemon. Um, one thing that I uh, also forgot to add, uh, by the time you're watching this episode 3 on YouTube, episode 4 will be already up on my Patreon, so if you want to watch the next episode early, you can link down in the description, yada yada, you know how, you know how it works, everybody and their mother has a Patreon now. <laughs> So, uh, let's not prolong it any further, let's just jump into it. Uh, encoding Overloader, the fuck are you on OBS? What could possibly overload my encoding? The switch, the switch between scenes maybe, I don't know. Okay, uh, season 01, episode 03. It is the correct episode this time, thankfully. So, uh, I'm not talking anymore, uh, let's... Watch this episode, shall we? A Simple Gear episode 3, version by HEVC, whatever. Uh, subs by D Track, or I think subs by Komi, edited by D Track, whatever. I told you all about it in previous episodes, so you can go back and read up on it. Uh, it's gonna be starting in 3, 2, 1, go. Okay. Okay, we're starting right where we left off. Or are we? They aren't fighting each other. Or are they? No, they aren't. Nice contrast. She's just running, constantly on the fence. Okay, so 
a time skip. A month time a, a month time skip. Uh I was already warned about it in the comments to one of the previous episodes that Simple Gear is a fairly uh, anachronous or an anachronic or whatever the word is uh, show. It doesn't always follow, you know, chronological order. So there is a lot of timescapes in the future, in the past. Hopefully it won't get confusing. I hope it doesn't get confusing, but I have a little bit of an experience with uh, Anachronous storytelling with Princess Principle, where every episode was, you know, at different points in the timeline. So, hopefully, uh, I will be a little bit accustomed to it. At least a little bit. And uh, I can't get over the head shape of the blue-haired one. Her malformed cranium especially in some shots it looks like she has a balloon of a head fucking mega mind <laughs> sometimes she looks good sometimes she looks like mega mind's daughter i forgot to pay attention to the lyrics of the op shit Okay, she's writing a report on something, on the noise. Sure. A long blink, eh? She has the simple gear training. Okay, time skip to the end of the previous episode. How dare you stand where she stood? Armed gear? Is this some new term? Or is armed gear the term for the weapon that manifests from the simple gear? So, we're not gonna fight? She's been thrust into it literally yesterday. Yeah, how dare you stand where she stood. Exactly. Raging and unthinking fire, yeah, that fits. Whoa! 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 Who needs Simpho Gears? <laughs> Who needs Simpho Gears? What the fuck? Ah, 
how do you stop that? It's just rain. Yeah, of course, duty over everything else. Ever since her girlfriend died. Ooh, no. Bad choice of words. Bad choice of words. You can just replace someone. You can fulfill the same role that someone had, but you can't just replace them. Ooh, that was on you. You deserved that slap. That was fully on you. Also, I'm still curious, was this suicide attack actually necessary in the first place? I mean, it probably was, but still fe feels a little bit far-fetched. Okay, she just falls apart. Interesting. That's some nice dorms they have, by the way. Also, those patterns on their walls. I don't know if it's a continuous pattern from top to bottom, or are those like silhouettes of the noise monsters? Okay, feelings of inadequacy. Uh, that's gonna be the running theme for at least the first few episodes, I'm guessing. Yes, please, air your grievances. Oh no, it's an enemy attack. I guess we can't do that. Ah, no, it's just past math. Okay. Mechanical, huh? Are they mechanical, though? Hmm. Oh. That is a nice connection of the fantastical story to a real world. 
some noise queen. That's a lot of highly classified information you're giving to a rookie. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Well, that's certainly more powerful. Or at least more convenient. That's why the concert. Okay. So they need another huge concert to try and activate it again. Politics, of course. I love that sound with her dumb face. <laughs> uh. Uh. Some terrorist on Earth, some aliens, some deity. If it was a trigger show, I'd bet on aliens, but... Why, the? Ah, of course. Uh... She's been upset for two years, and she's bottling up those emotions. Yeah. Bottling up emotions is never good. That's what my therapist told me two days ago. Because we're humans, yeah. Ooh! <laughs> okay, I like you even more now. <laughs> I already liked her, now I like her even more. Sure. She truly is the protagonist, even has her own harem. <laughs> Self-referential humor?
she's faithful to her wife. Well, that's a flag that means they won't get to see the shooting stars because she's gonna have to fight the noise, calling it now. Her morpher is ringing, of course. Zordon's calling, pick it up. No shooting stars for you, of course. Uh, <clears throat> broken promises, growing suspicion. I see where it's going, I see where it's going. Okay, so those aren't noise monsters, just patterns. That's why secrets are bad. Oh, we're getting a proper henshin! We have a hurdy-gurdy! Throwback to the hand holding in the OP. She's gonna be reckless, isn't she? That's a dangerous grape monster. Deal with them fast, and you might just be able to. Put your anger into fighting! It looks like... Uh, the insides of the lung. Oh... Oh? Now she's more effective. But I'm guessing it's some state of corruption and whatnot, and she must be stopped, and she must take control over her emotions. Ah. Uh. Or is her going berserk is an actual, like, desired state to a degree? It's never a desired state, let's be honest here. Uh, 
Okay, so each of them just sings her own song. It's not like the song is specific to a given battle or a given situation, at least so far. That came out of nowhere. So maybe you should deal with the monster? What? Can the noise speak? Oh, look, it's a noise general. Oh! I see what you meant about the cliffhangers. <laughs> I see what you meant about the cliffhangers. Should I give in to the temptation? Or should I not? Because it felt like no time has passed. I don't feel like I watched an episode. I can imagine how infuriating of an experience was watching this show as it was coming out, with no way to binge, no way to jump to the next episode. No preview, no title card. Game. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna watch the next episode. I feel myself getting sleepy and I don't want the quality of my commentary to drop and I don't want to start yawning while watching it. So maybe I'll watch the next episode tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know yet. Anyway, uh, let's go through it again, shall we? As we always do. Uh, yeah, we're skipping time a little bit, but not too much. I was afraid that we're going to be jumping way too much between different timelines. But apparently not. Uh, apparently we can get... Can't catch the lemon with my spoon. Uh, whatever. I was afraid we're going to be jumping back and forth on the timeline. But no, it seems that sometimes we get a little bit of a flashback, sometimes we get a little bit of a flash forward, sometimes we get a little bit of a time skip. It's nothing too great so far, so I'm I'm happy to see that. She's been training, but of course she can't be, you know, battle ready this quickly. She's been thrust into it against her own volition. Right? She never asked for it, she was thrust into this situation, she never had any proper training or anything like that, so of course she wouldn't be battle ready yet. Even if it's been a whole month. Okay, OP, OP, OP. Yeah, I thought those patterns are the noise monsters, but it's just cut off. I thought that it's uh, like uh, this part. This part is the head. This is the body, there's the single eye, and there are, the, there are those antennae. But no, it's just a pattern. 
I, I was told that there's a lot of details in this show, and I'm gonna be looking for the most minuscule details everywhere. Let me repeat that, they have an amazing dorm. I would I would love to live in a dorm like that. Look at this huge TV, look at this music setup. Look at this extravagant table and chairs and this weird Hello Kitty laptops. That's one thing. Um, I mentioned it when watching uh, Tokyo 24 Cool. I'm gonna mention it now. It's kind of weird to me. Uh, like, not in a negative way, but still kind of weird to me how when in shows, modern technology or technology of the future is presented in a way that's inferior to our current technology in ways. Um, Hello Kitty laptop. Yeah, it's, it's basically that. A big, huge, blocky blocky thing with a screen in the middle and way more plastic than is needed. Yeah, uh, I mentioned it in Tokyo 24 Coup because one of the characters also had like super bulky and super like, you know, industrial utilitarian laptop. And our modern technology doesn't go that way. We're not going towards bulkier and bigger and writer and whatnot, we are slowly but surely going towards a single slab of black glass. That would be like the ideal phone, for example. An uh, ideal laptop would also be a slab of black glass that displays the keys when needed and projects the screen as a hologram. That's the ideal we're going towards. So seeing this blocky pink laptop... Uh, now, it's not not too modern of an anime. Uh, when did Symphogear actually come out, actually? 2012 or so, I'm assuming. Judging by the art style, around 2012. Yes, indeed. January 6, 2012. So, by then, you would have some idea of where the technology and the aesthetics of it are going. I mean, the TV is still those silver bits on the outside are not the direction we're going in. It would have a sound bar. Perhaps I'm a bit too focused on that and I should just drop the topic, but it's always been interesting to me, right? The same way in um, in Mass Effect or some sci-fi games and sci-fi shows, you have a shitty monochrome hologram, holographic display that flickers and misses pixels and whatnot when nowadays we have 8K Ultra HD HDR OLED displays. It's always peculiar, and I always wonder where's that coming from, you know? Just something of note. Okay. Uh, that's the fight. I'm in a Habakirim. She got her interest. Yeah, we should fight. How dare you stand where she stood. And uh, yeah, the lyrics to her song are pretty damn apt. Raging and unthinking fire. I think it describes her very well. Dance to the tunes of God and die a death of glory. A glittering blade who risks all she has for those she loves. And this, this motherfucker... How? Did she drop into a cauldron of magic elixir when he was a child and he's not allowed to drink anymore? Was he born from a mother who had a sinful gear and was henched while giving birth? How? The, the impact... The impact shattered his shoes and... How? Who is this man? It, is it just a gag? It's just a gag that we're gonna see and never gonna get an explanation? Or is it like an actual in-world reason, in-world explanation? Or why is he so fucking strong? 
I don't know, it's just... Wow. <laughs> just, you know, oh, I strained my wrist a little. Mmm. Uh. Mmm, mmm, mmm. She fucked up. She really, really fucked up. She probably didn't mean what she said, but wording matters. Wording matters a lot. Yeah, you can see that in her face. And this slap was well deserved. I'm sorry, Hibiki, but you deserve that. You need to think a little more before you speak. And uh, she is all, no, I have no emotions, I am just a sword. Suppress, 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 suppress. I feel nothing, there is no grief, there is no happiness in me. Suppress the emotions, I feel nothing, I am a sword. And, uh, well, we see how well it goes for her. She can't cut down the... Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. She can't cut down the flame. Cutscene. That literally cutscene, the scene of a cut. Can we see it? Yeah, the blade. No, it doesn't miss. She doesn't follow through. Huh. And it's animated on once. Nice. That's weird. Initially, I thought that when I was watching, seeing it in at full speed, I thought that she swung her sword and didn't manage to cut down the flame to cut the wick, and that it signified her um, mm, her being, you know, weakened by the whole situation, by the death of uh, of her friend, that she can no longer do that, that she constantly repeats that she's, you know, she's a sword, she's unaffected by emotions, but at this moment she noticed that she is still affected by emotions because her slice, her strike wasn't true. But no, she stopped right before cutting the flame. I wonder why. I wonder if it has any significance, or is she just, you know, emoing around? Which, let's be honest, might be just as probable. And we know that if you have a simple year and you die, then you just fall apart, apparently. Cool detail, I guess. Uh, scheduled meeting. Mm. Yeah, and meteor shower, and right from this moment we have a setup for the classic, uh, you promised we will go together. Oh no, I just got a call. I can't be there. Oh, why? Don't you love me anymore? You have some secrets, and I don't like that. No, oh, I can't tell you about my secrets because they are secret. Why? Don't you trust me? <laughs> you know, the classic. <laughs> I, I can see where this is going. Uh... Uh, there's one more thing I want to see, but I will have to go a little bit back. Her report. It was translated. Okay, uh, just so I don't get a copy strike, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna watch this fragment. And jump back to the moment where it's shown. Mm. Come on, okay. Uh, on the widely accepted menace posed by the noise, the noise are a new kind of natural threat, though they appear all around the world, the circumstances and conditions of their materi materializations, materialization are unknown. No parts of the globe were left untouched, but focusing all and it trails off. Okay, 
So that's where we learn that it's a worldwide phenomenon. And uh, the way they materialize is completely unknown. Uh, which, as I mentioned before, leaves us three possibilities. Four, maybe? Uh, one possibility, of course, would be aliens, because it's always the convenient cop-out. Uh, the second possibility would be uh, some organization on Earth that uses the noise to for some means. I don't know, they might be eco-terrorists, for example, who want to call humanity to cut their numbers, to stop you know, using resources or whatever. There are many, uh, many possible justifications for their actions. Uh, third possibility, some vague ancient threat whose origins are never fully revealed. Uh, fourth possibility, some sort of a deity or a demigod or some being in that vein that just was bored and started throwing noise at humanity. Uh, and as I mentioned, if it was a trigger show, I my bet would be on aliens, but since it's not a trigger show, I don't know. Could be either of those. Probably aliens. Probably still aliens. But could be any. And yeah, of course, I'm gonna go watch the stars with you. Of course, she's not gonna. Uh, yeah, and it's not a modern threat. It's not like the noise just appeared out of nowhere. It's not a situation like in, for example, Tact of Destiny, where the D2s just appeared with a meteorite. The D2s were seemingly always there. Even, um, yeah, even uh, uh, noted down, even being the basis for myths and uh, creatures from myths and whatnot. Yeah, countless records. We suspect that many of the demons that appear in ancient legends and fables are in fact noise. I always like things like that, that tie the fantasy to the real world in some way. Right? That it's not fully, completely creating a completely uh, and fully fantastical world and fantastical situation with, I don't know, say, ancient statue of a noise monster somewhere in Egypt, but rather ties those monsters into existing things. Uh, to use that Egypt analogy, uh, perhaps some synth figures were uh, uncovered in pyramids, inside of pyramids, right? That is a much better tie-in than creating some non-existent structures buried in the sands of Egypt, right? Same here. Um, it's not that those, this, those noise monsters are completely completely separated from our actual reality. There isn't a whole um, whole thing built completely around them. They connect to actual reality through those legends. Right? There isn't, I'm assuming at least, there isn't a specific legend that talks about those specific uh, monsters, but rather, for example, uh, I don't know, the god Nergal from, from Sumerian myth was actually a noise monster, right? Or the, um, I forgot what they were called, but essentially the antagonists of humanity kind of sort of deal from uh, Slavic mythology. They weren't in fact the antagonists, they were noise monsters. It's a much better, it it grounds the story much better and it makes it more it makes it easier to kind of suspend your disbelief right because and uh, it lowers the cognitive load as well that's one more thing because you don't have to remember all that information about some whole new uh, kind of mythos created specifically for the show 
because you are a cust you, know, you you already know some myths, some legends, you probably know some you know demons from those legends, and you can just use the noise monsters as a stand-in for demons in those legends. And it immediately becomes easier for you to parse than us having to learn about some fake religion or fake myths. That was too long of a rant than I would have liked. Sorry for that. Uh, and yeah, so, uh, someone or something is targeting this area using noise for the Durandal, which is the complete relic, apparently. Hmm. That begs the question. Is, is the location being targeted by noise? Some actual, um, so to speak, sentient action? Is there some one actor that stands behind all those attacks and uses the uh, D2s, not D2s, <laughs> uses the noise to uh, get through their defenses and steal the Durandal? Or is it that the relics, to some degree, attract the noise? Hmm. Or perhaps, uh, maybe I'm reaching too far, right? But just uh, call it a crack theory or whatever. Perhaps it's the uh, Symphogears that, through some means, create the noise and made the noise attack those Symphogears. If you were to get rid of all Symphogears ever, all the noise would also disappear. I don't think it's the case. I don't think it's the case, but it's something that kind of popped into my brain. So I thought, why not share it with you? Maybe I'm maybe I'm onto something. I don't think I am, but you know, it's worth sharing your thoughts. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, the Americans want access to the Durandal. Of course, they do. This whole structure mixes pagan and cutting edge technology. Sure. And yeah, I'm not. I am a sword. I am a robot. I feel no emotions. <sighs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. She really is aggressively gay. But, uh, right. That one scene. I need to go back to it real quick. Where was it? Now, a little bit before. Uh, I'm gonna do this again. And I'm gonna watch it. Because I, I need to find this this bit. Her, her dumb little face and her dumb little noise. There it is. There it is. Found it. Now, if I could... Can I get the previous frame, please? There we go. <laughs> I don't know why I love it so much, but... But I do. This little sound she makes, and this dumb little face. Uh, yeah, it's... Getting made, it's getting made into an emote on my server. No questions about that. Too bad you can't have emotes on Discord have sound. Uh, that took me completely by surprise. And the fact that we stay on her face for this long. Oh, I love it. Ah. Uh, yeah, we need to write a report. And uh, this kind of golden hour colors, you can say, you can instantly see that something dramatic is gonna happen. You don't use golden hour for 
everyday usual scenes, it has it will have some significance. And of course, I'm gonna give this report, and we're gonna look at shooting stars. No, the fuck you're not. Yeah, her morpher is calling. And oh no, I can't be there. Of course, she can't. Yeah, and she gets pumped up with anger, with aggression, and slowly but surely transforms, goes berserk. Those little glows in her eyes, it's probably like an actual thing. Uh, it's not... Um, it's not a thing that they just animated here to show us that something's happening with her. It's probably actually her sinful gear reacting to her emotions somehow. At least that's my theory for now. Uh, although I would have expected her sinful gear to change somehow. Maybe, you know, grow spikes, start emitting some steam or something like that. But no, it's her head, her face that changes. It goes completely black. Uh, I'm assuming it doesn't like actually go completely black. It's just supposed to be a shadow, a very deep shadow that comes from nowhere. So it seems like her head turns completely black. Her eyes go red. She grows fangs and she completely changes her fighting style. She no longer runs. She's no longer on defensive. She quite literally rips and tears. Until it is done. But. This is interesting. Um, for a moment I thought that it's going to be made into a little bit more of a deal. Like her not being able to. Um, to control herself when she enters that state. But no, she just snaps back to reality. Boom, there, boom, there goes gravity. Right? Just like that. She's back to normal. Her eyes are no longer glowing. Her head is no longer black. So perhaps it's not as big of a deal as I thought it would be. Or perhaps this is just a little outburst. Perhaps, actually, if you lose control over yourself, you can actually fully lose control and turn into a monster of sorts. And you need additional training to do that. Maybe it's something limited to her. I don't know. It's only the third episode of the first season of like eight or however many seasons of Sinful Gear out there. And here comes her with her Ameno Habakiri. And. Dun dun dun. So, she's not a monster. She's a human. At least she looks human, which leaves us two possibilities. She's either a noise monster that is so advanced, so highly evolved that she became humanoid. But we hear uh, the mention of the name of this armor. So that makes me think she's actually human, who is, for some reason, siding with the noise. Which kind of makes me think that my theory about the noise being something from outer space, some actual, you know, aliens, trigger style, is not entirely true. That perhaps it is, um, it has originated on Earth. And it's someone actually on Earth, some super secret organization, some Illuminati kind of shit, controlling the noise. Hmm. I wonder. We don't have enough data yet to make like a fully educated uh, theory, but that would be my guess. Because why would she be... Um, why would she be joining the noise if the noise was an out-of-this-world threat, right? An otherworldly threat. Or if it was a force sent here by some sort of a deity. Or any of the other possibilities. Huh. 
Interesting. Interesting. She will, one thing for sure, she will either become the main villain for at least some time, or she will very quickly become friends with our team and become one of the Valkyries. I think we're gonna go the second route, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, she has too good of a design to waste it. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I guess I can see her joining. Uh, we have the blue, we have the yellow. There is still space for a green, for a red. There are some red accents on her suit, so I'm assuming she would be the, the Red Ranger. And uh, Hibiki's wife would be the Green Ranger, because she has green hair, of course. That's just my assumptions, and I have absolutely no clue what I'm talking about. So take it with a grain of salt. Or perhaps if you've already seen this anime, and uh, you know what's gonna happen, and who those characters are, then you're silently laughing and saying, Oh, you have no idea. <laughs> and you would be right. I have no idea. I'm just talking shit. Yeah, I have no clue what's gonna happen. I know for sure that we got a cliffhanger, though. Exactly as you guys uh, said we're gonna get. Yeah, that was episode 3 of Simple Gear. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. It It's really gonna get deep, isn't it? It's really gonna get deep. Uh, I initially thought that it's gonna be kind of like, uh, for example, say, Strike Witches. Strike Witches ultimately was a very simple show in its essence, right? We have the monsters, and we have girls with special equipment who fight those mon monsters. Simple. Uh, there were some added, more complex quote-unquote things, like... Uh, the life force of the witches being sucked away by using her, their powers and whatnot. But nothing past that, right? Monsters were just monsters. Uh, the gear they were using were, was just the gear that they would use. Their weapons were just weapons. Uh, Simple Gear creates a lot of interlocking, interconnecting systems. And that tells me that it's gonna go deep. And it tells me that everything will have its origin, everything will have its complete story, right? And even with the monsters, they aren't just aliens from outer space or aliens from the nth dimension that came here to eradicate humanity. Uh, perhaps someone is controlling them, right? They were on Earth sin for millennia, for as long as recorded history goes, but they went into a period of remission and now they're back. What caused that? Who could have caused that? Why are, there, why are they focusing on Durandal so much? Maybe someone controls them, if so, then who would that be, right? It's just the monsters and we're already asking so many questions. Uh, the gear, the simple gear that they're using, it's not just, oh, our scientists made it, like you'd usually see. No, it's actual, like, ancient technology that was uncovered and unearthed. And you don't even need an entire simple gear to work, you just need shards. And those shards alone alter your physiology in some way that makes you sprout cables out of your back and makes you manifest this armor, and it's powered by song. Who made those first Simpho gears? Right? How do they work exactly? What's the power of the Durandal? Who will wield the Durandal? Why is the Durandal here? Why does the noise want the Durandal? Or why does whoever controls the noise want the Durandal? With everything, every single bit, there are questions. A lot, a lot of questions. And there are also some answers, but none of them are super simple. As I mentioned, the answer of, our scientists made it. And that's it. The threat of the noise appeared when they came here crashing with a meteorite. 
and in response, our top scientists created the simple gear. That would be like the super easy way out, and perfect for a show that lasts a season, maybe two. But I can see we're gonna get places. Eventually. Maybe not even in the first season, but eventually we're gonna get places. There's gonna be... I can already say, I can already see there being an escalation, some sort of an escalation happening. Uh, perhaps not like a kill la kill kind of, um, or in general trigger kind of escalation, where we eventually go to space with a galaxy-sized Gundam to fight God. But I can see it slowly escalating. From just fighting of monsters, we're gonna move to fighting against the evil organization, then we're gonna discover the homeland of the noise, and we're gonna go there to try to stop the rifts in reality from happening, and then we're gonna discover the queen of the noise, the big, huge monster that we will have to defeat. You know, there's gonna be, I can already see some kind of a gradual progression in stakes, in danger, and in depth of everything happening. I might be way off mark, but I don't think I am. I don't think I am. Is there anything else that I would need to say about this episode? Uh, I should stop playing with my, with my numeric keyboard. I already paused the recording of like Tokyo 24 Coup, I believe, and I had to restart it. Or was it Tokyo 24 Coup, or was it those Frontline? I don't remember. But it happened. Mm, right. Uh, anything else about Simple Gear that I would want to say? I don't think so. I think we're still in the uh, early, early establishing phase, so to speak. Our characters are still learning how to um, cooperate, how to live with each other. Our main protagonist is still learning her powers. We, the viewers, are still learning about the world. So we are certainly not yet in the thick of things. So I don't think there's much more for me to analyze here because I would risk overanalyzing things and uh, maybe even hyping myself for things that wouldn't happen, I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think that's gonna be it. I think that's about it for episode 3. Uh, future episodes, I can see them bringing more to the table and more of the discussion happening, but even now, I'm, I've been talking for over an hour already, so <laughs> I fear when we get into actual meat, you're gonna see like two hour videos from me, I swear. Okay, I think that's gonna be it. Uh, we should end this here. So uh, how'd you like it? How'd you like this episode? How'd you like my reaction? Do you have any other comments to make? You can leave them down below in the comments section. Just refrain from posting any spoilers, please. Uh, also, I know that the manga is based on the anime and not the other way around. Also, someone on Discord told me that. This Was it Discord or was it YouTube comments? I don't remember, but someone told me that. So, uh, I mean, you're not gonna get me any spoilers from the manga, but you can get me spoilers from the Symphony Gear because this show came out in 2012, so 10 years ago. You had time to watch it, so you can probably spoil it for me, but don't. Please don't. I want to experience it myself. You might be tempted, right? You might be tempted to throw some uh, innocent spoilers or some spoilery things or maybe a timestamp with a smug emoji or something. Refrain from doing that, please. There is a channel on my Discord server where you can throw spoilers freely and discuss the show as it goes with fellow gearheads, you can do that there, not in my comments section, please. Uh, okay, speaking of Discord, you can join it, link down in the description, and if you're a Patreon uh, supporter of uh, me, 
then you can get access to a secret Patreon channel and a role and nice stuff like that. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that channel yet. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that role, but maybe, I don't know, some live meeting once a week or something. I have no clue. We're gonna think about it. We have a channel on the Discord with suggestions. If you have any suggestions, throw them down there. Uh, I'm getting sleepy. I don't know if you can see, see that. My tongue no work no more, so I'm gonna go through that quick. If you like this video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it, but tell me why so I can improve. Cables. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified of my future releases. It's not just Symphogear, it's also Sabiku Ibisco, which is coming out on Monday or Tuesday something like that, Girls Frontline slash Dolls Frontline, which came out yesterday, um, Tokyo 24 Cool, which came out the day before that, and I will also start watching Arifureta Season 2 soon, and I'm probably gonna be releasing that on Sundays, I'm not sure yet, because I honestly thought that it's gonna start coming out next season, not this season. So I'm entirely unprepared for that, and I don't want to fuck up my schedule even more. So, we're gonna see. I'm gonna record my reaction to the first episode tomorrow, probably, and I'm gonna release it whenever. I don't know. It's my life. I have no clue what I'm doing. <laughs> Uh, anything else I need to fill? My Patreon, of course. Uh, you can support me there if you really like what I'm doing. For just a dollar a month, you get access to that role at yada yada on the Discord. For 10 bucks, you get early access to uh, Simple Gear and any other non seasonal non shows that I would be watching up to one week early. Mm. Yeah, subscribe, like, Patreon, share this. Share, share. <laughs> Share this video if you know someone who would like it. And that's it. And I need sleep. It's it's 3 in the morning. I need sleep. So, as always, do all the good stuff. And uh, I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Hello, OBS? There we go. Here's the outro. Can't forget that because I want my Patreon supporters to have at least some recognition.